Now let's try to connect to our DVR locally using a PC on the local area network. We need to install the remote agent client software on the PC that we're going to use. Follow the steps and complete the installation program. You will see two new icons on the desktop, Remote Agent and Backup Player. Double click the Remote Agent icon. This will start our Remote Agent Client Software program. Before we can connect to our DVR, we will need to set up the Remote Agent with the correct settings for our DVR system. First, click on the wrench icon to go to the local setup. Right click on the word Sites and add a new group. You can give this group any name. Click on the newly formed group name and the blanks on the right side of the screen will open up. This is where we will enter our DVR information. You can give the DVR any name you want. Enter the IP address of the DVR exactly as we saw it before, 192.168.1.99. The client service port number is 6100. The username is admin, all capital letters, A-D-M-I-N. The default password is 1234. Below the password field, we must do our channel assignments. Click the drop-down boxes and select each channel, in order, up to the number of channels you are using on your DVR. If you're using the 16-channel version of Remote Agent, select the number so that you have 1234 across the top row. The second row would be 5678, and so on. If you're using the new 64-channel version of the Remote Agent software, each row will have 8 channels, so just add the channels in order, 1 to 8 on the top row, 9 through 16 on the second row. When you have finished configuring your settings for the DVR, click the Add button. The Remote Agent software will allow you to connect to more than one DVR at the same time. You can also add multiple groups. Each connection group can contain one or more Digimaster DVRs, up to four units in each group. Now that we've entered our DVR information, we can click OK to go back to the main screen. Click the drop-down box and select the group name for your DVR. Then click the Connect button which is the left of the two buttons below the drop-down box. If the connection fails, you'll need to recheck your settings and try again. If all of your network settings still appear to be correct, try pinging the DVR from your PC. Let's click Start and Run, and in the open box type CMD. From the command prompt type ping, P-I-N-G, space, and the IP address of the DVR, 192.168.1.99. If the connection fails, you will see messages that say, Request Timed Out. If the ping is successful, you will see replies from the IP address of the DVR. If the connection dialog says you're connected, but the video of all the channels is still black, it's possible we'll need to make one more change in our local setup. Click on the Configuration tab. Then click the video setting, GDI. This is a video card compatibility mode setting that should fix the video on most PCs that are having this problem. Click OK, then close and restart the Remote Agent software. Select your group name from the drop-down box, and then click the Connect button to try again. Once we've successfully connected and we're seeing video, we can use the Remote Agent software to see both live view and playback video from our DVR system. To view playback video, click on the magnifying glass icon to flip over to the playback side of the software. Here we can search the DVR using our date and time entry, the video timeline, and our play controls. Also, we have the ability to remotely configure our DVR by clicking on the gear icon to go to the remote setup menu. The system will ask you to confirm your admin password before allowing access. In remote setup, you can configure most of the same settings that you can from the DVR, with some limitations. The remote agent can also perform a remote archiving operation downloading small video clips from your DVR directly to your PC. You can check out the Digimaster User's Manual for more information on all the functions of the Remote Agent software. Now that we've connected from a PC on your local area network, connecting from outside the network is done pretty much the same way, only using a different IP address. The private IP address of your DVR, 192.168.1.99, can't be used from outside of your local area network. Any PC that's trying to access your DVR from the Internet we need to use your public IP address, which is assigned to your router by your Internet service provider. To find out what this address is, you can either go into the setup menus of your router, 
or open up an internet browser and go to whatismyipaddress.com. When you go to that site, it will load a page which tells you what your current public IP address is. Also, in order for someone to connect to your DVR from outside the network, you'll need to enter some port forwarding settings into your router. You will need to create port forwarding entries for both the client service port 6100 and the web service port 80. Both entries will use protocols TCP and UDP, and both will point to the private IP address of the DVR, 192.168.1.99. For more information on how to set up port forwarding on your specific model of router, you can go to portforward.com and check out their setup guides. Once you've added your port forwarding entries, you can attempt to connect to your DVR from somewhere over the internet, using the public IP address that we found before. You would set up the remote agent the same way you did before, this time using the public IP address. The port number, username, and password would still be the same. Of course, we understand that networking can be complicated, and if you have any problems getting this to work, feel free to call GAN's technical support for assistance. Well, that's all for part four of the Digimaster training video series. If there's any topics you'd like to see covered in upcoming chapters of the Digimaster training video series, send us an email. The address is trainingvideo at cbcamerica.com.